Well, welcome back to Buffalo Times. I've been away and I've been working on a building and I've been doing a lot of artwork and I just haven't been around. So it's good to be back and I'm starting with an art show that I'm doing at the Whitewater Gallery in East Hardwick. My name is Nancy Shade. I'm sure that you will take a little break from the COVID news and watch our local TV station because I hope to be producing shows of everything that goes on in Hardwick and the region around Hardwick as much as I can. It's, uh, it's fun to produce shows and I love talking to the local people about what they do and why they do it. So I'll be with you more this summer hopefully, in the days ahead. And I want to start out with this show that I'm exhibiting here. It's called um, Men Who God Forgot or Men Who Forgot God. And I'm starting out with this piece where a person that I knew who was a very wealthy person um, became a very bad drug addict. And he decided he needed help, and he found it in m many different ways. But when he was at the Adult Children of Alcoholics, ACOA, um, that was the success. That really helped him. He gave up everything, and he became a painter. He married a woman who was a painter, and actually started painting large paintings as pentimento, where you can see through time uh, in the paintings. Then he died. And I was studying about um, something called your Holy Christ Self. And I had this image, it was sort of a vision, that he was being carried to the Almighty by this divine being. And so I made a sculpture of it. And I, it's, really, it's really about all mankind, us females, everybody. And how at this time when we are uh, addressing this COVID-19, because this is, uh, we're doing this on June 1st, 2020, and we are working with um, the end of it for this time being. So people are starting to socialize a little bit, but we're still wearing our masks. And, um, and it's hard on society to be in this position. It's even hard to know how to behave when you go out into society today. Um, so it's taking a little break and we're just looking at some of the artwork that's relative to actually disease and the healing of disease and what's going on in our world. The second painting that we have here is called For the Beauty of the Earth. And it's addressing how beautiful our Earth is when you're close to it and when you are far from it. Because now they can film it from outer space and we can see what is happening. And the changes which have always taken place on the Earth are happening dramatically today. And so the woman that I have here is a wise old woman. And that's why I have this corner as the beginning of the show, because it's dealing with wisdom and death and beauty. And hopefully we can think about things differently in the future. We don't know what the future holds um, ever but we know we can go forward joyfully, having no fear if the Almighty is with us. And that's what it seems the whole world is dealing with the Almighty, because all of the people in the world now are dealing with death and what happens when people die and why people get ill and the scientists are looking at it and we need to be able to find ways to cure these diseases and to live better. 
So we'll go around the show and see what, how I perceive um, this journey. And I welcome you to join me. Thank you. It's good to be back. <laughs> These, these two are prints, and they were done with Philip Robertson here in East Hardwick. I had a friend who um, doesn't think she's an artist, but she could do anything. So I said, do you want to go? She had been in an operation, and I said, do you want to go to Philip's and do a little printmaking? And he was wonderful. So he does all, we do all the artwork, and he does all the printing. And um, so I did Independence Pass. Because in 1971, I had a brother who was killed in a car accident. He was living in Aspen, and he died in Independence Pass by himself. And somehow, I ended up making these two little mountains with a pass in between and little aspen trees in front of it. Very simple, very easy to do. And it's, I recommend, when you have the opportunity, to have somebody who's teaching you something, to go ahead and do it because you never know what you're going to end up doing. And um, she did some wonderful work with, with Philip. Um, this other one is called, Surely This Man Is the Son of God. And the man who's, who pierced the Lord with a spear, that's what he said. And you can probably see there's sort of a face over here. It's hard to tell, but it's a profile in a block, and then there, in this block, there's the spear, and the, this is Christ hanging on the cross. So um, it's when you become convinced of that, it's a conviction that does stay with you and does lead you, uh, lead you through the valley of death, really. So that's what these two little prints seem to represent. I had no plan on what I was going to be making, and that's what I ended up with. So sometimes when you have the skill, um, you can, and which I have because I studied at the Academy of the Fine Arts, and I, had, I honed my craft for five years there, and I studied in Europe on my own, traveled alone on the Michelangelo to Naples and through to Rome and into, um, into Florence and up into Zurich, and then Basel, and then on to Paris. It was a four month trip. I was only, I turned 22 in Florence. So I was a young woman traveling alone and uh, I had all the freedom in the world to go to any museum. People weren't going to a lot of museums in those days, any gallery, and I could study very thoroughly. And it takes a lot of work to hone your craft, but if you are going to be an artist and you want to hone your craft, it's, I highly recommend studying and learning your materials. This is a, this is a preliminary painting of uh, Robert Frost. I was asked to do a portrait of him in oil, and I just did the preliminary before I did the oil painting. I actually like the preliminary better than the oil myself, but the man liked it and he bought it. So this one I kept, and uh, uh, it was um, the road less traveled that I was thinking about because there's footprints in the snow. It's a snowy night and um, he was just a great American poet. He also did the Nothing Golden Stays, which is one of my favorite poems. And then this painting over here is called On the Edge. And um, a lot of vets are being taught how to trust by experiencing horses in their lives. There are, there are therapists who are using horses to help the vets um, build trust in their lives again. And um, I call it on the edge because sometimes we get to the edge of things before we really can reflect on what might be disturbing our lives to the point where um, we become antisocial. And uh, so it's just a testament to the light. Um, there's some light coming through the clouds here that there is hope for people, um, whatever, whatever condition they find themselves in. And there are wonderful people out there that can help. 
And horses are very special that way. They, um, I don't really understand how they use the horses, but they, the therapists that use them are succeeding with helping uh, PTSD with, with the veterans and, um, and other people too. You, anybody can go and take a look at their trust. It's a good thing to do. In the wind is two women on a path and there's a tree that, there's a man standing against the tree. I don't really know, um, I don't really know what this drawing is about. It just came about. Uh, so it's just, I think, it's about conversation and uh, things that are happening. There's a dark cloud coming in around the tree and there's just uh, a wind. And then this one is a simple kind of drawing. It's, it's almost like a yin and yang kind of thing or a yes and no or it's uh, the built-in, it's starting to do, do the profile built into the, into the face. And I, I have other pieces where they're built into each other, sort of. So this is uh, the beginnings of that. This is an olive tree in Mallorca, Spain. Um, it, olive trees are really ancient, and they just keep growing and producing and they're just uh, really wonderful trees and the wood is beautiful. Um, the men go up into the hills and gather caracolas, snails, and they, the women make these amazing feasts with these caracola that they gather. They're large snails and they, they they take the they cook them in the brine and it's just an amazing um, experience to be in a place where you're uh, living the culture alone and given the freedom to go from place to place and paint and I had that opportunity for four months in I think it was 1985 or 86 and uh, that's a result of just the, a memory. And then this uh, sculpture is a heavy bronze. It's very heavy, but it's hollow, but it's heavy. And it's called, oh, my offering or the offering. And she's offering her um, melons, honeydew melons. And that's what she has to offer at the market very healthy, very nice market. And I like to have the back showing because I liked her braids, but I also like the way she could put her toes together, like um, face to face, <laughs> the way she was sitting. So that's just the piece called Offering. This is the series from, of, of uh, charcoal drawings that I brought um, into this exhibition as the title, really, uh, Men God Forgot or Men Who Forgot God. So the first one is a young man. I mean, he's just wearing this fun hat and he's in a position of balance and he's, he's contemplating and moving his life forward as the as symbol by the circle, which is like the earth. And he seems to be pretty much in harmony with it and having a very um, calm time about it. And then it moves to this one called too heavy because the world starts to get heavy for people and they recognize it's a little different than they thought it would be. And here he's wearing a top hat because the top hat is sort of the symbol of, you know, wealth and importance. And he has attained that, but it's getting awful heavy. And this one is when he says, 
I'm going to let it all go. And this, she's sort of slid down as Muse is slid away and she's kind of kicking the world away. And he's feeling free, so he's wearing a beret. Um, it might be the illusion of freedom, but at least he's feeling like he's um, ready to uh, create something. And he has the freedom that he needs to do that. Um, the problem with that sometimes is the next image, which kind of represents um, whenever we make something, whatever, plastic bags or gasoline from oil or whatever, it transfers into some kind of trash. It's just the nature of creativity. I mean, these could be trashed someday, but at least we've worked through something. But he's sort of like downtrodden and he's wearing that cap that people wear to keep the light out. And um, now the muse is sort of turned into a protector and an angel angelic kind of being. And uh, I don't know much more to say about it, except that God doesn't make trash. And when we move toward, uh, I guess, sort of giving up what we think is worthwhile, sometimes we move into another condition of darkness for a while. And that's what this other one represents where they're in the dark here, but they're, they're surrounded by the hearts, one pointing up, one pointing down. I don't really know what that means. There's other people that could explain that better than I can. The fish represents actually Christianity as between these two upward and downward hearts. And uh, what that what that might come to be. And the last one is, it's just a plant, you know, a coleus, and it's, it's shaped like a heart. It, and it shows for me that even plants contain love. And plants are something that we're always surrounded by when we're in nature. We ha and then we perfect them into something else that they might never have been without mankind maneuvering them. This, this painting is sort of a mystery because I started out just trying to do an abstraction with, with the leaves and the blue paint and the swirly yellow. And it was, it was just sat around in the studio for a long time. I didn't like it. I'm really not much of an abstract painter. Um, and they had a show at Miller's Thumb. It was, it was called Roots, and I thought, hmm, Roots, what's, what can I do? The, so it, since there were trees and there was sort of the yellow swirly things like roots, I thought uh, of people with roots coming out of their feet, their toes and their fingers and their hair, and this is a woman on one side and a man on the other, and they're just going through the infinity, the golden infinity of um, eternal life. That life is eternal. We go on and we, but it's, we're rooted in, in the earth, but we're also rooted in on earth as it is in heaven. So I sort of put this together very quickly and put it in the show. And people seem to like it. I don't, I don't know why they like it, but they seem to. This one is, um, this is a strange one. It's studies that I do about the throne, uh, coronation throne in Westminster Abbey and the stone of destiny that's under it where all the kings and queens of England have been coronated for forever. And um, who knows if it's gonna go on. But this is just playing with maybe God does have a white beard and he has his robe and the white horse and the, all the starry, twinkly things. And these are sort of crowns. 
And there's three little crowns here made with these twinkly kind of, I don't know what this really is, light somehow, people, I don't know. Um, and it's the coronavirus uh, 19 is, corona means crown. And so I thought this would be a relevant painting to put in the show because some people think everything's under God's control and we can move through it and we can ask for help when we need it and maybe we'll get it, who knows. This is cosmic union and the veil is symbolic of the church and that's all I know to say about that. It's just it's hard to understand sometimes how the church is feminine and that there is a union of Christ and his church and there are men in the church and there are women in the church and there are children in the church and they die and when we're in this condition of having a lot of people in our country die, which we've been in before, I mean, World War, uh, the wars where many people died and the Civil War it was I think almost 700,000 people, plus all of the people who uh, were related to those people who probably died because they couldn't even plow their fields anymore. So it's, it's really amazing how, when you start thinking about death and how you don't feel that the I am that you are is ever going to die somehow. And we don't know what it is until we're there. But the scary part about it is how you die, not that you're going to die. We all know that we all die. But it's, it's just something that comes to mind. And it just seemed appropriate to me to try to have a kind of conversation about it and uh, listen to what other people have to say about it, too. So. Part of the reason doing this show is to open conversation a little bit more about um, life and death. So this, this is a painting on Monhegan Island. I've shown it before. Uh, and it's just butterflies that arrived as we were resting on this pinnacle of, over the sea and woke up and monarch butterflies were everywhere. There were a lot of um, autumn flowers, asters, and they were probably fueling up for their trip back to South America. How they flew all the way out to Monhegan Island, I just don't know. Maybe, maybe they were born there but, um, and headed home. But it was, I wondered what the bird saw when it flew over us because it, it made a calling sound. And uh, that's how this painting came into being, just pondering things. Oh, this set of paintings is really funny because here she's putting her foot into the Golden River, testing the water. And here she's decided she's going to go into the water, but you better leave your hat behind. You're not going to need it. So he decides to have her back, keep her back. I mean, watch over her and follow her into this golden river. Um, I think that's somewhere in the Bible, a golden river that flows by the throne of God. Thrones are important in the scripture. Um, and so is genealogy. So on they go to the tree of life whose leaves heal the nations. I always ponder that too, because really, what are those leaves and how, what are the nations that they're going to heal? But there is promise in it. And one of the promises is um, when Christ made his ascension, as Christians know, but a lot of people that might not know, um, when the Holy Spirit was sent as the comforter to the apostles and 
the gifts of the Holy Spirit are many. And in a lot of churches, they don't really teach people the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it does say at one point that we don't have because we don't ask, and we don't ask rightly. And so I guess what we can rightly ask for are the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our lives, self-control and peace and love and all the wonderful teaching. Teaching is prophecy. There's many of them so that you can find them in your Bible if you have one. And it's worth, it's worth knowing what they are because if you don't have discernment in your life as the man didn't have discernment about what to do in the world, was changing his hats all the time, and ended up in despair of some sort. Um, if, you don't, if you don't ask, you don't have. And so you can ask for discernment because that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So discerning what our next move is with horses to cars to outer space. And with horses, I mean, yes, they went, they, went to the bathroom in the street and people had to clean that up and women would step in it and they had long dresses and everything. But, <laughs> but we moved from horses to cars. And the reason this horse is like hollow underneath and with a metal frame is so that you're sent, I'm trying to say, we can, we, if, we, if we can move from horses to cars, we can move to what is ever next that won't be polluting the atmosphere as cars have done, as we well know. And um, we can have hope in the future that there will be solutions, but it seems still that no matter what we do, we end up with some sort of trash. So that's a problem that people are dealing with too today. But anyway, this one is called Not Alone. And I did this during this, um, this pandemic that we've had in the world. And uh, I don't know why I dwelt on it so much, but I, I say, do you, do you feel the sun, the sun? I mean, and then I say, do you feel the sun, S-O-N? So the sunshine and the sun. And the, she's sitting there and it feels like she's been attended to and warmth and with uh, peace and stillness in this sort of barren kind of setting. Um, and this one is a total mystery to me. It's just called, Who is the Hawk? And the hawk has a little bit of blood on him, so he's made his catch, and the man is probably carrying it in, in his, under his right arm. Um, but uh, it's just kind of how people used to go hunting, not with guns, but with nature, in nature. This is the black-hearted mushroom man. It's very dark, and it's got a lot of color to it. But I did it with my left hand after I had um, hip surgery and a right shoulder all in one, one winter, a right shoulder repaired. So um, I would go to Grace and sit in the sunshine and very quietly do these funny little paintings. And this came out one day and uh, I'm juxtaposing it. Um, I mean, it sort of backs you into a corner, which this is a corner, and it's small, but it's very scary. And um, I wanted to show it this time because of this disease, too, because um, there are fearsome things that exist in this world, and they are not good, but that's why I call it the black-hearted mushroom man um, because he, he, this man acts from darkness and um, it is a choice. 
because the other choice could be that we have something in this suffering servant who is, who is really, this portrait came out, this was also done with my left hand, um, very scribbled, but there's a feminine aspect to it with this lighter face on this inner side, but then this darker green is the masculine face. So really what I call this is purity has no gender. <laughs> and there's so many confusions about gender today that, um, that somehow it struck me that um, this man with his crown of thorns um, had a wholeness about him that this man doesn't have. And so I don't know much more what to say about that except uh, it goes back to the balance and being in balance and how we need to help each other and the world to find its way back to an equilibrium that works for everyone. And that's all, that's all I can say or show about thoughts in this year of the virus. Thank you. Be well. And I look forward to doing more cheerful, things in the future with you. Bye.